Hey folks, a new German CNC spindle manufacturer has offered me a small factory tour. And who knows, perhaps we get to take home a product sample fresh off of the production line afterwards. This video is sponsored by Spinogy. Let's check them out. Their headquarters are in Weiterstadt, Germany, near Darmstadt. So it took a bit of Autobahn to get there. I think they have only just incorporated and moved into this building in 2021. A tough time and a tough country to start a business in. All the more impressive how this operation is already up and buzzing. They've also invited some dubious Instagrammers in addition to this dubious YouTuber. So I don't think we'll find anything worthy of industrial espionage out in the open today. But maybe we can sneak out such a 3D drawing for perusal later. Out of this complicated assembly, I think at least the outer shells, the cooling sleeves and the balancing rings are being manufactured in-house from raw stock material. Not mind you with these manual milling machines and lathes, but with a glorious Doosan vertical machining center, which is presently busy producing lots of these small parts, not sure what they are for. It's CNC Seption over here, producing motor spindles using motor spindles. And it reminds me yet again of all the lovely features that my machine is still missing. These guys are going to get anodized externally. Before being outfitted with one of two cooling sleeve options. The air cooled flavor is cheaper and needs no external chiller. Whereas the water cooled model is able to remove more heat under extreme stresses. Possibly extending bearing lifespans and leading to better machined surface finishes simply with reduction of the motor shaft's thermal expansion. Meanwhile, a second Doosan behemoth, a Lynx 2100 turning center, has also finished its cycle and is allowing us a furtive glance inside. It's a smaller Doosan turret lathe in the grand scheme of things, I guess. But from my perspective, absolutely huge and sexy. It is producing these balancing collars. They are going to get loaded with matched grub screws, attached to a spindle shaft and used to counteract microscopic imbalances. Now microscopic imbalances may not sound terrible enough to warrant all of this extra effort, much less an ultra precise, ultra expensive balancing test stand. Yet here we are in the presence of a dedicated PMB desktop balancer. This is necessary because Spinogy's higher end products are meant to be operated at up to 50,000 RPM, where even fractions of a gram millimeter can cause violent vibrations and ruin a chance of getting good surface finishes. Naturally, it was only a matter of time until reps would discover this tiny, rarely visited room where the ultra precise measurement equipment lives, even though an entire exciting CNC workshop is open to him. My spontaneous request for teardown permission was unfortunately declined, on grounds of this being an important and costly business asset. But we are getting a demo, so we can speculate at least how this thing works. I think the rail on which the test subject sits is mounted somewhat flexibly and equipped with one or two accelerometers. That reflective photoelectric sensor is looking at the spindle shaft. It can detect that black marking and therefore determine the part under test's frequency of rotation. That information could be used by a kind of lock-in amplifier to try and focus only on vibrations caused by the test subject and not by cars driving by outside or something. Damn, I'm almost tempted right now to try and build such a thing. Everybody knows how to measure spindle runout these days. But a DIY imbalance meter? That would be cool. Anyway, those were the balancing collars and the last components whose manufacture I've witnessed. They are making a lot more of the spindle components here in Germany. Such as the shafts, which are then case hardened and precision ground. However, the squirrel cage induction motor rotors that are pressed onto this shaft and the potted stators that are pressed into the cooling sleeves are outsourced for the time being. As are typical standardized components such as sensors, connectors, bearings and the tool clamping system. X22 seems to be more of a modular platform than a single product that can be equipped with more or less options according to a customer's needs. There are SK and HSK automatic tool changers or a normal fixed manual ER20 tool holder. There are economic or super high speed options, standard steel or silicon nitride ceramic bearings, temperature sensors and even tachometers for closed loop control. 
All configurable in Spinogy's online shop with immediate transparent pricing. All the way up here is the main reason why I would love to test drive an X22 on my CNC machine. My previous spindle has served me flawlessly. However, with its two-pole induction motor it really needs those higher frequencies to develop meaningful torque. For this model a four-pole motor is available, which I hope will give me the same torque at half the RPM. That would allow me to use larger tool diameters and at the same time keep me from producing those ultra-fine aluminium microchips that were always difficult to clean, sometimes even airborne. Overall just making my CNC workflow a bit more cumbersome than it needed to be. Let's see if a Spinogy X22 can put a stop to that. The bundle that they've sent me includes everything needed to get started quickly. But I still have to recover my CNC shed after some kind of natural disaster, aka solar installation has happened there. So no first chips today I'm afraid, just first looks for now. They sure put a lot of faith into expanded recycled cardboard. Let's start with a smaller box, I can't remember having ordered anything else. Oh I see, this is almost a story in its own right. This is I think a completely in-house engineered from scratch water cooler. It contains a reservoir for spindle cooling water, an aluminium radiator, Noctua industrial cooling fans, temperature and flow sensors and a surprisingly high volume high pressure water pump. This thing will not be stopped by long thin hoses from keeping your spindle cool. If it ever does detect an unsurmountable constipation, or over temperature I guess, it will not only emit an audiovisual fault indication, it also opens up an internal relay which can be used to break a CNC machine's safety interlock. It's a beauty. This cute miniature control cabinet that Spinogy calls X-Control P is responsible for all things pneumatic in their automatic tool changer spindles. Perhaps they should call it X-Control New instead. <laughs> it's filled with the finest quality Festo hardware. An input filter regulator, an under pressure switch for error detection, a single solenoid valve which goes to the regulator on the right and an either one out of two solenoid valve which sucks in a tool holder by default or ejects it otherwise. The regulator on the right limits the pressure slightly and is meant to deliver a short burst of air that keeps a tool holder interface clean while the change is in progress. Notice how there's no permanent low pressure outlet prepared for air purge. The thing where a constant stream of air is drizzled out of the spindle to discourage dirt from entering. Not happening here for some reason. This large control cabinet is not quite as cute, but it has its charms too. It's called Spinogy X Control E and it's in charge of all things electric. It can be ordered with customizable lengths of ground, spindle sensors, spindle power and mains power in cables. It's engineered to comply with Germany's strict electrical safety regulations and of course it uses high quality components only. I'll try not to get too attached to it just yet, because this might only be a beta version. I'm told that my spindle is in fact equipped with the positioning sensor option, which the classic MX2 variable frequency drive in here can't really utilize. Other than that we have a chunky mains filter, a braking resistor, an overload switch, a 24 volt DC power supply and a safety supervisor device that watches all sorts of inputs and ensures safe operation by only agreeing to work when everything is in order. And we even have some playground left unoccupied in the middle for implementing more stuff in the future. They also sent some swag. I'm sure we'll be able to find a machine surface with enough room for one of these and my third party warning label. There was also some ominous metallic lubricant for up to 1400 degrees C included. I'm not planning to get close to that kind of temperature rating. They've also supplied some beautiful Swiss made Regofix high precision ER20 collet chucks. These are crucial. The lowest run out CNC spindle on earth can perform terribly if equipped with poorly made collet chucks. And of course something to put the collet chucks into, some branded HSK E25 tool holders. Will this growing collection of tool holders convince me to finally build an automatic tool changer magazine? I don't know. 
I hope so. It really should, but I don't know. Please bully me into it in the comments if I don't get it done this year. And now, the grand finale. You've already seen the thing in the first few seconds of this video, but let's just pretend that hasn't happened. Yep, that feels like one hell of a motor spindle. Ooh, now I do appreciate expanded recycled cardboard as much as the next eco hippie. But uh, this special occasion might be one where a plus one plastic bag might be justifiable, don't you think? But then again, in operation this beauty will be exposed to much much worse kinds of dust. So it's probably going to be alright. This dust topic is actually related to a subtle but awesome design detail that all X22 flavors have in common. Remember how the pneumatic control cabinet didn't have a low pressure air purge output? Well, turns out they are using a special kind of labyrinth seal in here. Manufactured by GMN in Germany with a bunch of geometric features that make it apparently all but impenetrable to incidental and pressurized foreign matter in standstill and even more so with a running spindle. This ingenious part lowers system complexity and compressed air consumption. Fantastic, since I'm still stuck with a smaller compressor that is always on the verge of overheating in longer jobs. I was just about to speculate if the main spindle bearing seats were integrated into this outer aluminium body and if such an unorthodox design would have any impact on rigidity and longevity. But no worries, they've apparently made the bearing seats and what I believe is a pre-tensioning cover from tool steel. Excellent. There is still a lot of aluminium between the bearing seats and the integrated mounting holes. That is not something you'd find in a hundred horsepower, few hundred thousand dollar CNC spindle. But I believe the large rectangular cross section makes this plenty strong and completely okay. For a 2.2 kilowatt precision spindle. We're not preparing to make blue steaming ABOM 79 chips here. Yeah, this is looking great so far. Thanks to Spinogy for the factory tour and for sending over this huge kit. And thanks to you guys for watching. Hope you are prepared for a bit more CNC content this year. Perhaps. <gasps> oh no.